What did he do? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Clem, you made the right choice. I let you down. <coughs> I let everyone down. Why did you make me do this? I'm sorry, Clementine. We almost made it. We were close, weren't we? <coughs> I thought I wanted this. Asked for it so many times. Now that it's happening, I'm scared. <coughs> it's okay, Kenny. You're... You're going to see Katja and Duck. You're going to see them again. Oh, you're always good for a smile. But I'm really emotional right now. But I, I started making videos here on my own and you guys have like started watching my videos and you guys afforded me the chance to go off and do this as like my job to do. It, it doesn't even feel like a job. It, it still feels so much fun and I really love doing it and it's all because of you guys and I'm really thankful for that every day and you guys changed so much about my life in this one year. I mean, because we started the channel at 30,000 subscribers at the start of the year, and now it's almost at 2 million by the end of it, and it's just crazy what's happened in this one year alone, and it's all because of you. Like, all I do is the same as I've ever done. It's just me sitting on my own in my room, shouting at my computer, at my, at my microphone. Uh, my microphone and my computer probably hate me because I sh hurl abuse at them all the time. But you guys are what, are what made the channel what it is right now. You guys have boosted it so much further than I ever thought it would be because I didn't think this would be my job I didn't intend for this to be my job. It's amazing that I get to do it as my job But I just did it because it was fun. I still do it because it's fun um, I, I just started making videos because I liked playing games and I saw other people do it and I thought hey that looks cool I want to do that and it's morphed into something way beyond I could ever imagine and I'm so grateful for it You have no idea. I mean a lot of people forget where they come from when they start YouTube. They start YouTube and they go out with great intentions and then all of a sudden the whole like fame of YouTube gets to them and they drift off and they forget everything that they were. They don't say thank you to the people who got them to where they are. The, the viewers who boosted them to where they were, or to boosted them from where they were to where they are now. They didn't even say thank you to them for that and that is deplorable in my book. That's disgusting to see that kind of stuff because without viewers, YouTube means nothing. You don't have anything if people aren't there watching you. So I, that's why I'm so grateful for you guys every single day that you're here watching me do my silly immature little videos every day and changing everything about me. I, I like even as a person I've changed a lot and for the better. It's not nothing bad has changed about me. At least not I don't think so. But everything that's changed with me is all for the better and it's all because of everyone that watches my videos. You may not think that you mean a lot. That you may not think you have much sway or much power or anything like that on the channel or you have no contribution because you're just one person, but you really do. I appreciate every single one of the people who watch my videos and it's all a community effort. Everyone will always say like, you deserve this Jack, congrats Jack, thank you Jack. Like no, don't do that, please, just thank yourselves. Look in the mirror and say yeah, I helped that person today, I helped. Jack get to like, oh, like get to be able to move houses and live on his own and all that kind of stuff. You guys are the ones who have changed everything for me and I should be thanking you all the time and I will. 
I'll continue thanking you every single day that I can. I really regret the way I like say goodbye to Mark because we were staying at the same hotel so we were like going into the hotel at night time and he had to leave early in the morning so it was the last time I was going to see him but like we went into the elevator and there was another guy there so it was just like Oh yeah, it was really nice meeting you, shake hands, and then like, elevator doors closing, like, hug, bye, like, talk on Skype, and just walking off, and I was like, really sad, because like, I really wanted to like, have a good send-off, and like, really make the most of it, and like, show how appreciative I was, because it was, it was because of them that I was able to go, and it was because of Mark that I was able to like, learn a lot of the stuff, and like, just go to certain places and get into certain like, lounges, and that kind of thing, so, I really wanted to show my appreciation, and I completely fucked it up. I messed it up and I missed my chance and I really didn't show just how grateful I was for everything, but hopefully he knows. Um, it was really sad then I went back to my hotel room and I was just like sitting there going, I have to go home tomorrow, I can't like meet these people again tomorrow and I had to like get in a flight and go back to Ireland. I couldn't meet you guys the next day either, <laughs> why am I fucking tearing up talking about this stuff, but I, I really regret it the way I said goodbye to everybody. What am I doing? This is stupid. <laughs> Sorry. But I wasn't just sad because I didn't get to see those guys again. I was really sad because I didn't get to see you guys again. Um, so many people came up to me over the weekend and talked to me. And like, when I went back to the hotel room and I was on the plane and everything, I was just sitting here thinking, I'm not going to get to do this for a, a long time again. Um, it's going to be a while before I get to go to a convention again. So I was really sad. And coming back here and I'm just sitting here alone again. Um, I really want to go back and just meet people and high-five people and talk to people and sign stuff for them and take pictures with them. Um, I, I'm gonna make so much more, I'm gonna make the most out of it I, the next time I go, really and truly. I'm just gonna go balls to the wall and just have so much fun. I did have a lot of fun though. It was the best weekend I've ever had in a very, very long time. Probably the best weekend I've had ever. And I'm so grateful, and it's because of you guys that I get to go do these things. Because you guys are here watching me every day, and you've brought the channel to where it is now. And um, because of you guys watching, and like the popularity of the channel now, it's because of you that other YouTubers know who I am, who the channel is, what the name represents and everything. So just thank you so much. I wouldn't be able to do these things if it wasn't for all of you. And I really am truly grateful. I hope everyone knows that. I don't want him to die! Dearest Marie, as the war ends for me, I have no regrets. I've seen too much horror. I hope fate has been more merciful to you. Our time on Earth is brief, and mine has been filled with so much joy that I can only be thankful for how much I've been blessed. Most specially, for the wonder you brought into my life. This letter is my last. I've been found guilty by a military court for the death of an officer. It was not my intention to kill him. War makes men mad. Though I failed, Carl, I know my sacrifice has not been in vain. I fought for my country and my liberty. My honor is assured. Since it is the will of God to separate us on earth, I hope we'll meet again in heaven. This is sad. Papa. Always. Even though their bodies have long since returned to dust, their sacrifice still lives on. <laughs> We must strive to cherish their memory and never forget. <laughs> that sucked. 
Why do you have to die? And he died thinking that Carol was dead. Oh. Fucking hell! Stupid game! <laughs> I fucking- as soon as he said that he was sick, I knew that he was gonna die. Oh. And now I know why people said that I was gonna cry at the end. You were right! God damn it! Cause- cause he thought that- he got the dog tags thinking that Carl was dead and then he wrote a letter to Marie and then at the end he was saying that he failed Carl so he died thinking that he- he didn't save him even though he was safe, he was alive and well Oh fuck's sake I'm depressed now but then it was- another part of it was like, I'm not gonna get time to meet all these people. The first few days I was meeting people and we were able to talk and everyone was able to get like five minutes with me. And we- I was really able to make it like the- as best as I could. Cause that was really important to me that everybody got the best experience they could possible out of meeting me. Um, because they were queuing for hours and hours and hours and their feet were sore and their legs were sore and they were so tired. And when they came up to me I was like, okay, make it as good as possible for these people. Like, <laughs> like, just talk to them. Like, get them to ask the questions that they really wanted to ask. Um, but the last signing then, when it came to it, people were coming in, getting their five minutes, and then the staff came over to me and they're like, Okay, if you want to get through all of this group, you're gonna have to speed things up. You're gonna have to just go down the line, and what they ended up doing was cordoning off the area, and I had to go down the line myself. They weren't able to come to me. I had to go down the line myself, and then I was only allowed one signature or one picture. A lot of people were getting a signature and a picture still, but the security were just yelling out like, just a signature or a picture guys, and like, I hated that. Um, I understood that they had to do it, but I hated it, because people were starting to get rushed. And then I had to explain to people that they were getting rushed, even when I tried to explain it out loud to people, the security were like, okay, we have to start this. And I was going down the line, like, signing stuff, taking a picture, go. Signing stuff, taking a picture, go. And it broke my fucking heart, man. I can't do that. I can't do signings like that. But there was no way I was going to get through everybody if I was doing it the other way I wanted to do. So I was so conflicted. I didn't know what to do. And people were coming down the line. I was signing stuff for people. And then, like, they were so eager. And I could see on their faces that they really wanted to say stuff to me. And people were like, can I have a hug? And when I was hugging them, the security were like, you're only allowed two seconds. And they were counting it down out loud. How fucking shit is that? And people were getting hugs at me, and I could tell when I said goodbye to them that they were walking off. And I looked them in the eye, and I said it was really nice to meet them. And I could tell they had so much more they wanted to say to me. And they were walking out, and some of them were just so heartbroken, and then it broke my heart. I was signing stuff for a little kid, and he was like, he was really giddy, and he was really eager, and security like walked him off. And I started to tear up in the middle of the signing, and I was like, okay, fight it back, fight it back, because... It was ruining it for the next person, and I was so rushed through it, and I couldn't do it. It was not the way I wanted to do the signing. But I did manage to get through everybody. I was there for hours and hours doing it, and I'm really glad that I did get through everybody, but I'm so sorry if you feel like you were rushed. I feel like I didn't meet people the way I wanted to. I didn't feel like I met people the way they wanted to meet me either. And I don't know, I don't know how to describe the feeling of having to turn people away. It's the most horrible feeling in the world, and I really didn't want to do it. But at the end of the day, I had to because uh, there was not enough hours. The convention was closing, it was the last day. People needed to pack up all the stuff that was around the area, so I'm so sorry. I really wanted to meet people as much as I could. There was still, even after the 18 hours that I did, there were still people that needed to be turned away. And uh, I don't know. I. <sighs> There's just not enough hours in the day, man. I really wish I could do it for longer. If I did have the hours in the day, I would have stayed there all day until everybody got a signature and was able to talk to me, so I'm so sorry. This is sad because <laughs> it reminds me of the, the last few days when my granny was alive. And she didn't die of cancer or anything, but she, she was locked away in like a hospital for the last few months of her life. And she didn't really recognize anybody anymore. She was she was super like aware of everything. Oh god. Sorry, that's going to sound terrible. She was super aware of everything like 
her entire life and right up until she went into hospital but as soon as she went into hospital and she was starting to get treated for um I, I can't remember what it was she had she had something in her leg that spread through her body and affected her blood but she was in hospital for a few months before she died and her mind just completely went and I remember going in one time with my sister to see her and we were talking to her and my granny was like is Sean going to come in to visit us and I was sitting right next to her and she didn't know who I was and that was really sad Again, she didn't die of cancer or anything. It's just reminding me of it. And I need to move on or I won't be able to move on. And just reading all the notes is really sad. And I feel sorry for anyone who has lost family or loved ones. Just in general, but especially to cancer. Because it's not a nice thing. And the last, the last while with someone who has cancer is not nice either. Okay. I'm sorry about knocking over the mic as well. I, I grabbed my sleeve and I hit the mic. I can see the waveform right now and it's just a giant spike. I'm sorry guys. It's not Thank you for playing. For Joel Evan Green. J-E-G. Oh, he was real. <laughs> I was really hoping all that time it wasn't real, that it was just a story. so sad. <laughs> he looks like such a happy little boy. <laughs> That's the face of mischief right there. That's a child who has done <laughs> scandalous little things.
Frisk, you're going to do a great job, okay? No matter what you do, everyone will be there for you, okay? Well, my time's running out. Goodbye. By the way, Frisk, take care of mom and dad for me, okay?